What if we finally found it? A single injection that could erase cancer from the human body forever. The breakthrough we've all been waiting for. But what if the cure was worse than the disease? As of today, doctors are using the revolutionary gene editing tool, CRISPR, to fight some of humanity's most feared illnesses, and they've already had incredible success. But what happens when we push that technology to its absolute limit? We're going to run a thought experiment, a story about a patient on the brink of death, a new therapy that promises a miracle, and a side effect so terrifying it could change what it means to be human forever. For decades, cancer has been this shadowy figure in the story of modern medicine, a relentless and complicated enemy. It's a disease that hijacks our body's own instruction manual, turning healthy cells into destructive invaders. But what if we could finally rewrite the script? That's the promise of a technology called CRISPR-Cas9. You've probably heard it called molecular scissors, it's a system originally found in bacteria that lets scientists find a specific string of letters in an organism's DNA, make a precise cut, and either delete or replace a faulty gene. And this isn't science fiction, it's happening right now. In late 2023, the world saw a medical miracle with the approval of Kasgevi, the very first CRISPR-based therapy. It's being used to treat genetic blood disorders like sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. For patients like Victoria Gray, who suffered from agonizing pain her whole life, this treatment was life-changing. After the therapy, she remains free from the severe pain that once defined her existence. Long-term data shows the vast majority of patients who receive Kasgevi no longer need the constant transfusions or suffer the painful episodes that dominated their lives. Inspired by these victories, scientists turned their attention to the biggest prize of all, cancer. The logic makes perfect sense. If CRISPR can fix a broken gene that causes sickle cell, why can't we program it to find and destroy the genes that make cancer cells so unstoppable? The answer seems to be, yes, we can. Clinical trials are underway right now, as of 2025. Researchers are using CRISPR to soup up our own immune cells, turning them into supercharged cancer hunters called CAR T cells. These modified cells are engineered to recognize and attack tumors with brutal efficiency. Early trials have shown incredibly encouraging results, with some patients who have late-stage, incurable cancers seeing their tumor growth halt completely. In one amazing case, a patient with metastatic colon cancer saw their tumors disappear entirely, and more than two years later, they still haven't come back. Now, these are not yet universal cures. They're complex, personalized, and still highly experimental. The biggest hurdle has always been making sure those molecular scissors only cut the exact DNA they're supposed to. Unintended edits, known as off-target effects, are a huge concern. But the progress is undeniable. The era of genetic medicine is here, and it's full of hope. But for our story, let's imagine the final breakthrough has been made. Let's say scientists have perfected it all, creating a single, universal therapy that can target any cancer, anywhere in the body. This is the story of that cure. And it begins with a patient named Alex. Alex was 38, and he was out of options. Stage 4 pancreatic cancer had spread with a speed that defied every conventional treatment. Chemo had failed. Radiation had failed. With only a few months left, he was offered one last shot a clinical trial for a therapy codenamed Phoenix-9. Phoenix-9 was the ultimate silver bullet. A one-time injection of CRISPR machinery, delivered by a harmless virus, with one single audacious goal, seek out the CRAS gene. When mutated, the CRAS gene acts like a stuck gas pedal for some of the deadliest cancers. 
Phoenix 9 was designed to find every single cell with that mutation and snip it out, triggering the cell's self-destruct sequence. The procedure was almost laughably simple. A single infusion, a week of nervous waiting. And then, the first scans came back. The doctors were speechless. The tumors were shrinking. A month later, they were gone, completely. Alex was, by every medical definition, cured. There wasn't a trace of cancer left in his body. The news went viral. This was the moment humanity had been waiting for. Alex became a global symbol of hope. His family wept with joy. The world celebrated. For a few perfect weeks, it was a fairy tale. Then the first sign appeared. It was small. His wife cooked his favorite meal, a spicy curry he'd loved since he was a kid. He took a bite and felt nothing. The texture was right, but the flavor just wasn't there. It was just bland fuel. He brushed it off, thinking his body was still recalibrating. But then other things started to fade. The soaring feeling he got listening to his favorite symphony vanished, replaced by a flat, technical appreciation for the notes. The deep, soul-shaking laughter he shared with his kids felt like a distant memory, a motion he could perform but couldn't actually experience. Joy, grief, frustration, they all began to recede, like a tide going out and never coming back in. He went back to the hospital in a panic. Physically, he was in perfect health. But the psych evaluations revealed something terrifying. His emotional responses were flatlining. He could understand happiness and sadness as concepts, but he could no longer feel them. The scientists who had hailed him as a miracle now looked at him with horror. They raced to figure out what went wrong. They discovered that in targeting the KRS gene, they'd stumbled into one of the great unknowns of the human genome. The target gene was located in a stretch of DNA that scientists had long dismissed as junk DNA. They were wrong. Buried in that junk, right next to the gene they had so expertly deleted, was a previously unknown master regulator. This tiny overlooked bit of code wasn't for making a protein, but for orchestrating the entire symphony of human emotion. It was the biological seat of the soul. In deleting the cancer gene, Phoenix 9 had accidentally silenced this master regulator. The off-target effect wasn't a new mutation. It was a complete erasure. They had fixed the typo in Alex's book, but in doing so, they had erased every adjective, every ounce of poetry, leaving only dry, factual prose. They gave his condition a name, acquired effective agnosia a permanent, irreversible inability to feel emotion. This brings up a terrifying question. Is a cure for cancer worth this price? Is a life without suffering also a life without joy? Before we get into the fallout, if you think these kinds of thought experiments are important, consider subscribing. We need more minds tackling these questions. Alex's cure became humanity's dilemma. He was a ghost in his own life. He went home to a family he knew he was supposed to love, but felt no connection to. His children's hugs were just pressure on his torso. His wife's tears were just saline. He was biologically alive, but experientially dead. He wasn't a person anymore. He was a perfectly functioning machine. When the story of the side effect leaked, the world's celebration curdled into a global debate. The cure was real. Phoenix 9 worked flawlessly on a biological level. And now, humanity faced an impossible choice. Terminally ill patients started demanding the treatment. For someone facing certain death, a life without emotion seems infinitely better than no life at all. Bioethicists argued that withholding the cure was a crime, but others painted a chilling future. What would a world populated by the cured even look like? A society of logical, unfeeling, and ruthlessly efficient beings, devoid of the empathy, love, and fear that make us human. Would they be the perfect workers, the perfect soldiers, a new, superior version of humanity, or just a hollow echo of it? Who gets to decide? Would you take the cure, knowing the cost? Would you give it to someone you love? The scientists behind Phoenix 9 were torn. 
they had conquered biology's greatest villain, only to unleash a plague of the soul. They tried to create a new version, one that could avoid the off-target deletion, but the master emotional regulator was so tangled up with the cancer gene that separating them seemed impossible. The cure and the side effect were two sides of the same coin. We started with a question, what if we could cure cancer? We found an answer, but it only led to a much scarier question. What is a life worth? Is it just the absence of disease, or is it the full, messy, chaotic spectrum of feeling? The story of Alex and Phoenix 9 is just that, a story, a thought experiment. To be crystal clear, as of today, no such side effect has ever been observed, and a universal cancer cure remains a goal, not a reality but it's a necessary thought experiment. As we stand on the edge of mastering our own biology, we have to confront what makes us us. The power to rewrite our genetic code is the greatest power we have ever held. It promises to end unimaginable suffering, but it also forces us to decide what parts of ourselves are non-negotiable. What are we willing to sacrifice? And what might we lose forever in the process? The choice is on the table. A world without cancer but maybe a world without us. What would you choose? Let us know in the comments.